Hey guys, it's been a while since I posted. I said that I'd uh, take a video of the accessories that I put in. Um, but I bought some more and finally got some time to install everything. So there's a little bit more added on to it now uh, than the last time I did it. So from the original post, I installed uh, the windshield. Um, the windshield wiper system, the fuse box, the bus bar. Um, and I think that was most of it. So what I was talking about is the fuse bar. Uh, sorry, the uh, terminal bus bar. It comes with the mount with this. And then here's the fuse panel by Honda. Sorry, you can't see that very well. And so everything kind of hooks up through these connectors that are down right here. So you're going to have your trigger wire that plugs into here that you're going to have a similar plug down here. Along with extra bus, or sorry, ground and power wires feeding from your bus bar. And so I also said I installed the worn winch, but normally Honda backs their worn winches and so you'll have your power wire and ground wire already hooked up and it should be taped with blue wiring like right behind that right there and then the other part was with the windshield wiper so you're gonna have to drill here the template kind of sucks and when you print it out it's not to scale so what i ended up doing is end up blowing up and zooming in on the printout until it fit nicely in this Kind of area here and then i was able to drill my hole and luckily the hole lined it up pretty nicely but uh there is a reservoir with it and then it comes with this bracket here that fits within your cowlings and you attach your motor for your windshield wiper and that is pumped to a sprayer nozzle here so that's kind of nice with an easy tap fill right here that attaches to your cowling bolt right there but as you can see um, if you get the Honda windshield wiper then you it also fits right into your plugs on your fuse box and that's why it says it requires the fuse box because it taps in right here it comes with five connectors you have your switch one and two right here uh, I think this is three and four the rest are auxiliary and then what powers uh, your windshield wiper and what powers the rest of your switches the, to be able to control them through that fuse box. <clears throat> Let me fix my light real quick. And so they come with eight <clears throat> 10 amp fuses right there. Yeah, and then it does come with this bracket here. So normally with the worn winch, they'll have two bolts on this bracket for this bus bar or bus terminal. And they're right around here where I've already installed a 400 amp uh, bus bar. I had to add a little bit more accessories to it. And so I didn't want it drawn off of just the 300 amp bus bar. Um, but instead of installing it here, I'd already had my wires pretty much rigged to here. But had to take it off of them. Uh, sorry, I have the Black Ops Super ATV 6,000 pound winch. I ended up stalling it. Right. I don't know if you can see it very well. Right underneath. I used the bus bar bracket. And so. I was able to tap in there drill through and put it on a nice little bolt system so it holds securely right there and it's out of the way <clears throat> but since the last time i provided the little overview of the talon i've installed now the 40 inch super atv led light bar I've also installed uh, rock lights to each well, and then I was looking for interior lights, and Honda makes them, and a lot of aftermarket makes them, and they just didn't get a whole lot of good reviews. I wanted something that I could control, and then for fun, 
something that I could change colors with. And I thought, hey, why don't I do the rock lights? So I bought the one set that comes with eight for the wheel well, and then another set of four. And I think they're Munchins, Munkins uh, rock lights. I'll make sure to upload in the description area where, but you can see I've installed them in the cab. So now it'll be really easy basically to, uh, so if we drop something or want to have light and assist in the cab, we'll have that. And I'll show you later and how it looks, but then I also added the chase light. I think that's a Sprite or a Sprite. I don't know how they pronounce their, their manufacturing name, but it's 30 inch light bar and it's chase light so two lights not the middle so you got one five on the left another one the middle another one and then one on the right these two on the far can act as brake lights center can act as a reverse and then you have your two flashing <clears throat> let's see But, oh, so I do have it still ripped apart. I'm going to put it back together right after this video. But I wanted to show you guys kind of how everything was installed. And most of it was just trying to get everything to fit. So, as you'll know, 10 amp, or sorry, so 10 amp circuit breakers are not enough uh, to draw a lot of power, especially this bus bar that's on a 15 amp. And I wouldn't recommend changing out any of your micro fuses on this. It's only rated at 80, and so um, you definitely would keep it at that. But since I'm drawing a whole lot of wattage, that's why I installed and bought this 400 amp bus bar, both, and comes kind of like this one where you have ground and power. It comes with four big posts. I think they're three eight inches, um, and I just created more terminal wires, six AWG, and that way I could feed what I wanted to. And so, in order to run <coughs> my all my accessories, I looked into separate fuse boxes and things like that. And I could have went that way, but I also remember working on vehicles that you have constant duty solenoids. They look just like a starter solenoid, um, but I would advise not using it because you'll basically get 15 seconds or 15 whatever minutes of use and it will blow. So you definitely, if you're gonna go my route, which you'll see this right here, this is, um, I wanted to say constant, it's continuous uh, duty solenoid. And again, Kind of looks just like a starter but it's not um so make, definitely pay attention if you go this route but this one can handle 85 watts so i have four um, light fixtures connected to it and what i ended up doing so this is a self-grounding solenoid uh sorry not a self-grounding this is you have to ground this solenoid which you can tell by these wires and these wires here so you got your ground and then your power and then you connect either end, it doesn't matter because it will throw that relay. Uh, your battery juice, which is coming off of those terminal boards right there, so that is live. And once you throw on power, I have it rigged to where voltage only goes on key on. Otherwise, um, this will always be activated and you'll draw power. So I ended up getting the accessory harness that you can get with a voltage uh indicator uh, by honda but i have a super atv one in the center dash so um the only way i use that is just to connect it and then therefore i could use that as a trigger wire uh, which came in handy so that will come on you'll hear activate when i turn the key on and then that throw power to my uh, left side of this and that's what's fueling all my light bars and things like that too. Um, now they are on switches, so it's kind of a double and they all have their separate fuses, which because when you go this route, you bypass going into a fuse box. So you definitely want to make sure you get light bars with fuses or go ahead and go to Napa AutoZone. 
buy yourself a fuse uh, lead kit and go ahead and put one on again so that way uh, if you do get any over an bridge this will blow before your system starts on fire so always recommend having your lights in on fuses independent of their systems but um yeah enough about that so you'll see this i just bought a nice little l bracket from lowe's it comes in a longer bar just use some wire cutters i don't have a welder or anything otherwise i would have made my own bracket but it comes in a four or five foot bar <clears throat> and i basically tanced it with some uh ratcheting clamps and to get that con uh, continuous duty relay or solenoid uh, mounted, I had to use another side of it and flatten it out. <clears throat> Sorry, another bracket, cut it to size and flatten it out and get rid of the angle. And that way it would fit. But everything is on and secure. As you can see, just for surety, I grounded that bar. But I found out that was nice and handy because all my light fixtures also needed the ground. So if the solenoid for some reason were to go out and it case grounded, it'll ground to the whole system there. So it'll prevent from starting fires and it'll throw a fuse uh, on the main battery uh, fuse. But I can use that as a ground too because now that whole bus bar, or not bus bar, but that whole bracket is grounded. <clears throat> And then if you're wondering what these are, these are my rock lights for the wheel wells and for the internal. I had to mount the other one on the windshield wiper bracket for some room and space. So one thing I wish I kind of would have done was cut these down to size so that way I don't have all these bull harnesses in here. But just zip tied it to the frame so they won't rattle and move. <clears throat> and that way it won't chafe and cause an electrical short later on. But <clears throat> um routing all these wires and trying to make them look good so my cab isn't all messy was well, kind of a challenge so i'll kind of show you what i did starting in the rear with these rock lights i basically mounted them close to the cross beam bar and i came across it here and i used on the outside skirt and hit them up on top of the roof so the only thing you can see is the zip ties but you also see the light bar so some people drill through they could go through on that one here it didn't look too bad the way i have it so i left it as is but you can see that it will trace down now the windshield will be on here so it'll take up some of this look here but I basically ran them down through the frame through this cowling and then fished them through and ran them across to be able to attach over here. And the same thing on the right side, passenger side, just followed the crossbar. Same with that light over there. Down frame to the cowling and across so that way I could connect. <clears throat> let's see so this chase bar and rock lights are now a little, little bit of a challenge i still used the frame went down through and decided for the chase lights i would come back around remove my seats remove the center cowlings not really having to worry about the uh, back cowlings behind the seats or under the seats because uh, i could fish most of the stuff through come across to this center opening down through the fuse panel and then once I could reach my hand in that hole down there you grab them out and start following along the harness not the left harness because that's going to be your that transmission but your shift lever and it's all on kind of the <coughs> removable oh, cable and so I didn't want anything cinched or tightened down on that one. And then you'll have to be careful here because you'll have, I believe, your fuel vent line. Yep, right there, falling across. So, right there. You don't want to zip tie anything onto that one and pinch it off so that way it can't vent. Uh, actually, that actually might not be the vent. That might be... 
I think that's the rat. If, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the rat. But anyway, you don't want to pinch it off. So, <clears throat> and then you can run it through all the way to the center dash. Keep all the wires nice and clean. Just keep following around the main harness, coming down through, and then back under to fishing it up back through here. Uh, so this is my setup I have, and that's what I was saying. I don't have the Honda uh, voltage and switchboard, which they have like a little voltage reader here, and then allows you for four or five switches across on here to here. But I already installed the voltage on that one, so <clears throat> could have went with the Honda and saved myself one, but I already had the switch, and it's USB, so I decided to go with mine. I liked it better. <clears throat> All right, so fishing the line. Kind of difficult, as you can see, especially on that top panel, and then from under here going down um, through and pulling back up. So I don't have a nice little, what do they call those, little cable winders that you can attach things to, draw it out, and then pull it back through. So I ended up getting a wire hanger. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's long enough and it works. But I got a wire hanger that I misplaced somewhere. I want to make sure I find it though, so it's not in the side by side. So, oh, there it is. And so just straightened it out. Oops. And then put a little hook on there. And I'll pinch that closed after I tie the harness to it and then just fish it through. And that worked very well for all the wires that I had to go through on that. All right. So that way you can see too with the rock lights. So I, I wanted to make sure there was ample light. So when we're going over rocks or bumps or holes, I can see better at night. But I also don't want them to be crushed the first time we go out or rocks cracking the lens because they are glass. Metal casing, but glass. <clears throat> so put them up, had them facing down. Uh, this one's more of an angle facing towards the rear and this one's just facing down straight. And you'll see they actually provide decent amounts uh, of light. So you both know if you have oh, a Honda Talon that the battery compartment, the left side of your vehicle, this is a different wheel well. <clears throat> As you can see, more cowling. So this was a little bit trickier. This is the only one I worry about, probably gonna get it damaged. Um, but I had it installed right there, right before the shock valve, or sorry, Fox valve. But then the other one, I just pretty much installed on in the same area as the left side. And with your front wheel wells, you can actually hide them a little bit better. So right up underneath the cowling on that one, and then right here too. So hopefully these guards and things like that will protect some of the rock fly mud, don't really care about, but uh, I just followed, again, trace wires on the frame. Kept them a little bit tight, but not too tight. So that way they'd pull out <clears throat> and then zip tied along. And then this is pretty much the same, the right side. But <coughs> so you can kind of see what everything looks like. Oh, and so this is the only part I didn't like about the rock lights, but I still went ahead and did it. Is that you're gonna go into your cowlings. Uh, tried to do rivets. I would have much preferred rivets, but the ones I had, and I couldn't find them at the local store here in Alaska. Uh, long enough rivets that would pierce through this and that rubber and hold on to at the uh, light itself so <clears throat> i got half inch ones wasn't long enough probably needed three quarter inch long and rivets but here let me show you what everything looks like Wait a second
first one. There's my setup there for interior lights, LED lights, the chase lights, and then the wheel rock lights. Huh. LED light for the front there, and the bottom must have went out. Oh, nope, I just have it wired wrong, so I'll have to fix that. <clears throat> so here's the interior lights. So that way I can see very well in the cab. I got them angled and faced just right so that way you can see on by your feet in case you drop something or I don't know. But that way I position them just right so that way you can see everything in the cab, especially when it's dark out. Same with here. <clears throat> and because the rock lights they do have the colors and so you know, I, there's a nice little remote that comes with it and I went with the same brand the 8 set and the 4 set so that way I could see, use the same remote but they also have an app on your phone and things like that but remote just makes it easier but you can control the speed in which they flash warning if you have epilepsy please disregard here let me stop that right now I don't want to I don't want to give anybody a headache because they're watching this, so apologize for that. I should have warned you. But you can dim them too if they're too bright. Like I said, I, I really gl I'm glad I went with the rock light choice for interior lights. It just it gives you more control, and um, it definitely put outputs a lot more light than I think any of the other aftermarket or even Honda brand uh, UTV indoor lighting or cap lighting would do. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and shut this off. And then here are the rock lights. So I'll put pretty decent light. Probably could have went with the four set, but just in case one of them breaks, Kind of like to have, I like the idea that um, I still have lights underneath if I want them. But it does light up a great deal. Um, like I said, pretty happy with them. All right, I'm going to flash them real quick just for a second. And then, um, actually, I can just probably do auto real quick with that. When it'll do it nice and slow and I won't flash it too bright. So if you push auto, it'll just cycle through the colors. Which is nice. And then the same thing. If I wanted to do this all together, if I was showing it, I just do auto and they. Sorry, hold on. Let me. Uh, that way they're on the same page. There we go. But yeah. Pretty happy with it. And yes, these lights are still running off of that uh, continuous duty relay. So I'll go ahead and turn off those rock lights, interior lights. I'm pretty, so just in case I didn't switch this to the steady on, my chase lights are right here. So, <clears throat> okay, it is steady on. So these will flash. And this might be a little bright, so I apologize. But it, I got the green one because some states, if you get the blue one, I don't know. I, I try to look at Alaska's. As long as you're not on any road, you can have the blue lights. But I didn't want to take the chance that if I was on the road and these were on, I'd get pulled over for <clears throat> mimicking an emergency vehicle. But you got the two red lights on the end. You got the green and the orange that will flash. I'm not going to do that to you guys, but there's like eight modes. <laughs> Uh, this is, will be the ninth mode, steady on, and then you have your uh, white light or reverse light. And so Honda Talon, owns, here's the problem with this one. You can go ahead and buy the reverse light kit for Honda Talons. And the harness that I got, I found out, 
that it's a ground wire. So this light bar needs a voltage wire. So the ground wire will interchange when you put it in reverse and then it will come on. So I just have it wired on right now for steady on. Um, but I do have another one. Got a kit for the light, for the brakes. And you'll probably be able to see that when I push it. <clears throat> Okay, it's hard to see just because the back brakes are coming on too. So maybe if I do this, you'll see a difference. Nope, I don't have two feet, so. Um, but they will illuminate brighter, send more 12 volts to it so it illuminates brighter. Um, and what I did is I bought an adapter uh, brake light kit. So it just basically plugs right into here. There's a, a pigtail on it. So flip, flip, plug in the original factory cable and then route your wires and then connect them onto uh, your brake lights. Now, if anybody wanted to know, your Honda Talon, these pull out. All right, you don't have to take a, these push pins. There's three along this bar and you'll never get this one out. But these pull out so it takes a little bit of force there's like two little rubber grommets back here that are holding it in uh, they don't come out but just pull <coughs> and you will get it to come out so i don't kill my battery i'm gonna kind of hurry this up turn off my chase light turn off this front one turn off my lights and the last one is my led bar so, if anything, I wouldn't even have to use my lights. This thing is bright. It doesn't pull more than 12 amps, uh, I believe. It's only on a 15 amp circuit breaker, so um, no problems with that one. But, all together, gotta love LED, LED lights because they don't pull or draw that much, which is fantastic which is why i can get by with an 85 amp uh, continuous duty relay or solenoid go ahead and shut them off oh yeah it's not too bad But that is pretty much everything that I did. So in the last few days, kind of wondering why it took so long. Mostly keeping the harnesses, feeding the wires through convoluted tubing and finding a good way to mount it. So that way I still can access things that I need to regularly access for routine maintenance, but also not make it look like crap. Uh, but for the most part, pretty happy with it. Um, Definitely like that I chose to take some things apart and route it to make it look a little bit more clean. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But that was a, not a quick, about 28 minutes, but kind of overview of all the accessories that I installed and what I needed to install extra to get to kind of there in that point. But... Some highly recommended ones or required ones, uh, again, would say windshield, so that way you don't have a bunch of water, mud flying up into your face, uh, even with uh, fender flares, which I don't have, uh, the additional ones. Those will help from kicking up mud, but man, if you only have a windshield and you don't have a wiper, you're still going to be wiping that windshield off or trying to hit every mud puddle, water puddle that you can to get your windshield to be wiped off or cleaned off so you can see. But bad thing with the Honda wiper blade is, is that you need to have the full windshield and it has to be glass. It can't be poly. I'll stop waving my light around like an idiot so that way I stop giving you guys headaches. But um, that is, I would say, a necessity. And then a good light bar source would be another necessity, which I think Honda Talon Special Edition model does come with a full light bar like that on top. So 
Um, necessity, necessity. Hmm. Oh yeah, side mirrors is definitely a necessity, and then a uh, rear view mirror would be a necessity. Other than that, um, everything else would be kind of a want. Now, with me and my family having two girls, and they bring their stuff, and they're always dropping stuff at night when we ride. Interior lights would definitely be a necessity for anybody like that, but uh, my route with using rock lights, that wasn't a necessity. <clears throat> Other than that, that is all I have for you guys. So again, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to make them. I'll answer them as fast as I can for you. Um, and that, here's a quick view again. Kind of how everything is laid out, zip tied through, secured. And as I go through this video and things I mentioned, I'll try to make sure to put a part number and let, what the name of the parts that I have installed on here. But all right, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Here's my Honda Talon 2022 1000XS4 with all their accessories. All right, have a good night.